Hi, welcome to today's install guide. Today we're going to be installing HomeApp, which is a self-hosted dashboard that I use to host links on my server to my self-hosted uh, containers through Docker, etc., or to my uh, LAN switches, uh, basically anything like that. Um, we'll jump straight in. Uh, this is a, an example demo set up on the uh, HomeApp website. Um, and as you can see, it's it's a great sleek looking dashboard. There are many out there, but I really think Homer has gone um, to town on this and they've made it really great. You can even have widgets that integrate with things like MB to show current viewers, um, AdGuard, and, and, and they can show you all sorts of stats uh, and things like that, which are great. This is the um, GitHub repository for this. Um, it's already got 44 releases as well over the last uh, couple of months. Um, which is really good if we go like right down to the far end here. Um, literally since May 9th, 2022, 44 releases, very active development, uh, which is great. So moving on, um, I'll make this really easy. I'll leave everything in the description below for you um, command wise. Um, but we're gonna be using Dockage to uh, deploy Homer, um, which is basically very similar to Portainer. Um, it uses Docker Compose files, uh, stacks, things like that to um, to get things going. Um, I've got a pre-compiled uh, stack here, um, only slightly modified from the website version um, that you can get on Homer. Um, and it basically, the only difference is, is because I run this on Docker Desktop on Windows, obviously I have bind mounts going into my um documents folder um so basically the important parts with home are the, at least the latest version um and i'm assuming you're going for the latest version since you're using this guide is that you do need three distinct folders uh one is the configuration folder one is the data folder and another is the icons folder you can include the docker sock if you want to many do i don't um the only reason for that is that I I, ha I do have dockage to control um, various aspects of that, and, and therefore I don't find much use in having it across uh, multiple projects, self-hosted projects. So it's entirely up to you guys whether you, you get on with that or not. Um, I also use a different port uh, than the one that Homer initially provides us, and that's simply because I already have a container running on that port. Um, the only other thing that I do differently in my compose files then I've seen in many others um, is that I do put deploy and resource restrictions because I don't think containers need to have everlasting uh, resources, especially if you find projects that sometimes come across memory leaks and things like that. Not that uh, Homer has anything like that, but uh, I just prefer to be a little bit more in control. Um, and networks. Being on Windows in the past, I have come across issues with IP conflicts where uh, the Docker uh, network has created a brand new network for itself uh, for each individual uh, container. And all of a sudden I've had issues where they've just crashed, not started, and things like that. And things have gone a bit weird. Um, maybe a Windows thing, not too sure. Either way, it can be avoided very easily uh, by having a network be created. So, I'll, like I said, I will leave all this information in the description for you to just simply copy and paste and then modify to your heart's content. Um, so there we go, but this should get you up and running. And remember, we are using Windows uh, as, a, as a means to host these server files instead of Docker with. So we'll jump straight in with this uh, and we'll select all and copy and we'll go straight over to Dockage. If you'd like to know a little bit more about Dockage and how amazing this self-hosted app is, uh, I used to use Portainer all the time, but the problem with Portainer is I, I used to have a lot of stacks, a lot of composed files saved. But uh, if something went wrong and I'd have to start from scratch or reinstall Portainer, I'd lose, for some reason, I'd just lose access to all those composed files and stacks. They wouldn't save them anywhere local for me. So yeah, you can basically copy and paste um, the compose file um, from the description below into here. Uh, and the cool thing about uh, Dockage is that when you click save um, or deploy, uh, we'll click save now just for test purposes. This will actually locally save in the directory I set Dockage up to save these things as a composer ENV, as compose or env files, which are really cool uh, because you can now access these locally, which means you can literally go on here and then open the files up as you would um, 
normally, which you can't do on Portina. Um, they're just lost if if you reinstall Portina or something happens when you just can't access those. You lose control of of your composed files, which is not great. Um, but there we go. So I, I do recommend using Dockage, and I do have a video on that, which I'll also leave in a link below for you. We will deploy. Uh, when it's starting for the first time, it only takes a few seconds, nothing crazy. Um, and then, as you can see in the uh, terminal below, it's listening on this port. So we're just waiting for that to kick in. And it only takes, like I say, a few minutes just to sort that out. Once that's done, all we do is we click on the port number here, which will take us straight to our brand new Homer dashboard. So we'll literally, I don't know why it says start update process. We haven't installed one before, but if you were to upgrade, I'm sure it should say that, but maybe that's something for the developer to look at. Start update process. And all it's saying in this is that make sure you've got your three files. The newest uh, version to this is uh, data, uh, which wasn't used in previous older versions of Homer. It is now. So like you say, you can look at these if you want to, but we don't need to go any further as far as, as long as you're following my guides, you don't need to go any further because we've already done this. So we'll click continue and we're just going to create a user account. So I'm just create a quick one. There we go. And then it gives you some options to check out documentation, go to your board, go to the management dashboard, things like that. We're just going to go to the main board which shows us what the demo showed us. It shows us the, you know, just a very basic uh, way of setting things up. And then you can kind of make it your own at this point. So, so I'll tell you what we can do. We can do an app to dockage, for example. Let's make a one to dockage. T-O-C-K-G-E. Dockage, I'm pretty sure that is not the uh, the logo there. So that's in, in important to double check these things. Yeah, that's looking for the Docker mail server uh, logo. Maybe it doesn't have the Dockage logo. It does not. So if we can't find the Dockage um, logo, um, then we can actually just download it from the internet. Um, you can literally go into GitHub, whatever you're looking for here, add Dockage. Find the logo there. Find the awesome logo here. Uh, all copyright and trademarks remain with the GitHub repository owner. Okay, this is just for uh, educational purposes. Um, and we could literally save the image as. We can literally go to Homer into our icons directory uh, and save that as DOCKGE, blockage, click save. The important thing to remember, um, if you are gonna download your own icons within uh, for Homer, is that once you've downloaded it into the, into the directory that you've bind mounted, which we did uh, earlier on, by the way, um, which will be downloaded, we've just downloaded it into this folder here, um, is to restart Homer because it needs to kind of rescan the folder, if you will. Um, so to get that working, we'll just literally go back into Dockage, find Homer and click restart, simple as that. Okay, so that's now restarted. Um, so we're going to go back into here, we're going to come out of these because no doubt they've uh, changed slightly. We'll refresh the page here. Obviously, I hadn't saved uh, that configuration prior. Uh, but now that's done, go back into edit mode and click on apps. And we'll do uh, D-O-C-K-G-E. Um, this is going to go to HTTP forward slash forward slash local host on port 922. That's going to be the same for them. To the bottom um, and then obviously for appearance now to get uh, into this all we've got to do literally is take off that little dot there because we're in windows and we don't need dots without trailing slashes um, this should then load up dockage there it is um, and that's what we've got to do once you've got your icons in that icons folder the the actual address doesn't have to be the full uh, exposed one uh, as you've seen in the map container Whereas some containers would require that, which would be forward slash app, forward slash public, forward slash icons. Um, Home Man actually neatly just lets you um, change that to just forward slash icons, forward slash the name of the uh, icon file and its extension, uh, which is really cool. Network status, do you want a status checker? Yeah, why not? Let's put that on there. And then just click save. And exit and save in the top right again. And there we go. We've got our first 
link on our dashboard uh, that takes us to our dockage um, self-hosted container. Now, if we click on this, nothing happens. And why is that? Go host. All right, yeah, of course. I've set the wrong bloody uh, port number. It's actually um, for dockage. It's nine treble three. There you go. That's uh, an example for you of what not to do. Nine trouble three is the port we're looking for. Let's try that again. Dockage. Boom. And it goes straight there. Now imagine you having this uh, for all your self-hosted uh, containers, all your self-hosted projects. Anything. You could have it across your level. I've got mine uh, on my one um, actually set up to connect to my uh, TP-Link switches, um, to uh, my AdGuard server. And integrations too, because you can actually, if you go back into edit mode uh, and you click on here, you've got widgets as well. So the widgets are really cool because you can actually see download speeds, torrent, video streams. You can have your cameras in here, media servers and things like that. And literally I've got mine um, with bookmarks, everything. Uh, really, really cool stuff. Uh, calendars, you name it. It's all in here. But I hope that gives you a very brief uh, overview of what uh, Homar can do. Uh, and I hope you like it. Um, and I highly recommend Homer and I highly recommend Dockage. They are amazing self-hosted projects that you can do. Um, and I would like to thank the developers in those projects and all contributors for them because they're, they're absolutely sublime and, and really great to host. But this was just a quick way of putting it onto your Windows um, server, if you will, whether like me you're running Windows uh, 11 and 10 Pro um, or just um, proper Windows server. Whatever works for you, um, I really hope it works out well for you. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.